Here and finally, on account of internal uh, dissensions, dissolved. The church made a request of the United States government for a grant of land. This is a wrong move. This is not good. They asked the United States government for a grant of land, and this is uniting the state and the church. Now let's see what happens. President, <coughs> President Madison knew about Baptist causes and had fought for Baptist causes for years. Okay? Now let's see what he does. President Madison rejected the, this petition and later dated June 3rd, 1811 and drafts the same church as the North Carolina and gives his reason for the action in the following words. I have received, fellow citizens, your address approving my objection to the bill containing a grant of public land to the Baptist Church at Salem Meeting House, Mississippi Territory. Having always regarded the practical distinction between religion and civil government, as essential to the purity of both, and as guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States, I could not otherwise have discharged my duty on the concession which presented itself among the various religious societies in our country. None of them have been more vigilant and consistent in maintaining the distinction than the society of which you make a part. And it is an honorable proof of your sincerity and integrity that you are ready to do so in the case of favoring the interest of your brethren, as in other cases. It is but just at the same time that the Baptist Church in Salem Meeting House to remark that their application to the national legislature does not appear to have contemplated a grant of the land in question, but in terms that it might be equitable to the public as well to themselves. He believed in separation of church and state, as Thomas Jefferson did. Our churches were speedily gathered, and in 1806, five churches sent messengers to Coles Creek Church, and the Mississippi Baptist Association was organized. Remember what is the Baptist Association? Association is a, is a meeting place for church members of Baptist churches to go and, at, and talk about their needs among the churches. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the representatives or the, uh, the deputies of these churches, the messengers, go back sometimes with money or to get money and take and help other brethren for missions, for education of pastors. Educating pastors is extremely important, more today than ever. And back in this time it was very important too. The association became the mother of all other associations in Mississippi and Louisiana. North Mississippi are the, are the Chickasaw countries. Now, this is my family. North Mississippi or the Chickasaw countries was not open to settlers till the fourth decade of the century until Andrew Jackson evacuated all Indians into Indian territory and they were never supposed to take Indian territory from, from them it would nullify all treaties if they ever took one acre of Indian territory, but they did. Now they got it all. The government land office was at Fontautauk. People turned, poured into the country with amazing rapidity. The Fontautauk Union in February 1838 gives the following account of growth in North Mississippi. Now this is all to the detriment of, the, of my Chickasaw people. They didn't want to leave their, their land was great plantations with great mansions and homes. <clears throat> they weren't going to take wild land from these Indians. They were going to take cultivated land and homes, great plantations. At the governor's election two years ago, there was less than 500 votes polled on the, the whole Chickasaw Nation now subdivided into 12 counties. At the late election, the returns so far received close to 4,087 votes polled for the governor in nine of these counties, showing the astonishing, unparalleled increase in our population of 1,000% in two years. 1,000% population increase in two years into this land that was not treated for. 
We do not believe there is in the history of the United States an instance of the peopling of a country just emerging from the domain of, a, of a savage with the same rapidity, the domain of the savage. Now, these people were not savages. They were civilized. Five of the civilized tribes, the ones that had great plantations, the ones that developed all types of agriculture. We attribute this to the climate unsurpassed on the American continent, to a soil universally and inexhaustible fertility, well watered and presenting the means enjoying all the blessings of life in a great perfection and profusion as one fall to the lot of man. Now this land was going to be taken stolen from the Chickasaw Nation. It was well watered, it was irrigated. They irrigated the lands. They had homes, they had, they had plots of land, they had fences. My family had 5,000 acres under cultivation there. Through the Natchez County of Mississippi, the Baptists entered into Louisiana. This territory was ceded to the United States by France on April 30th, 1803. Previous to that date, a long after the religious contingent of the state was distressing. There is some very interesting information written in the New Orleans on the date of April 8th, 1850 by uh, uh, Mr. Mills and Smith to the Massachusetts Bible Society. They were agents of that organization and presented the following view of Louisiana. Now, what is this country? These are Cajuns, aren't they? Marilyn, you watched a little show last night about this Cajun cook, didn't you? All right, now this is the background of this. We left Natchez on the 12th of March and went on to board the flat bottom boat where our accommodations were indifferent. The weather was generally pleasant and we arrived in New Orleans on the 19th. The distance is about 300 miles or 100 miles above the Nor New Orleans. The banks of the river were cleared and in descending the river you pass many elegant plantations. The plantations are what? Indian plantations. Did they have slaves? Some of them, yes. The whole of this distance and the banks appear like one continued village. Actually, when, when the Anglo-Saxons came to the East Coast of America, the whole East Coast was lit up with villages and towns. They were Indian villages and towns. These were the civilized tribes. The greater part of the inhabitants are ignorant of almost everything except what relates to the increase of their property. Destitute of schools, Bible and religious instruction, and attempting to have they had no Bibles, and that the priests did not allow of their distribution among them. The Catholic Church did not want the people to have Bibles. The Catholic Church did not want the people to have Bibles. The Bible will turn you away from Catholicism. It will turn you away from error, just like it did Adoniram Judson, etc. An American who had resided there two or three years in a place which had the appearance of being a flourishing settlement informed me that he had not seen a Bible during his stay in the settlement. He added that he had heard that a woman from the state of New York had lately brought one into the place. Boy, this is news, huh? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mills, accompanied by Reverend Daniel Smith, made a, a second missionary journey to Louisiana in 1816. And he says, there are American families in that part of the country who never saw a Bible nor heard of Jesus Christ. It is a fact that ought not be forgotten that so late as 1815, a Bible in any language could not be found for sale or given away in New Orleans. These gentlemen likewise give the following information about the, the, the state of, the, of Louisiana. In 1810, Louisiana contained 76,556 inhabitants, 34,600 were slaves. At the time of its population is doubtless considerably increased, but to what extent we are not able to say. The principal settlements out of New Orleans 
and above the north part of the state are almost wholly occupied by Frenchmen and Acadians and Germans who speak the French language. The settlements on the counties of Atacapas and Opelousas are very considerable and have a mixture of French and American inhabitants. Now most of the Acadians today are a mixture of American Indian, French, and basically white people and black. They're a mixture of all those. There are in the state two Methodist circuits but there is no Baptist preacher, as we could ascertain out of New Orleans nor Presbyterian minister. A very large portion of the state has never, as we have can learn, been visited by a Presbyterian preacher. Many of the American inhabitants were originally Presbyterians, and were many would rejoice to see a respectable missionary among them. It is therefore of immense importance that one should be sent to explore the country and learn its moral and religious state and introduce as far as possible the institutions of the gospel. Such a man might not only be useful to the Americans, he might exert salutary influence on the French also. He would doubtless promote the further distribution of the French scriptures. Religious tracts and, and religious tracts in that language might be very soon circulated among the people. And a prudent and diligent use of such means we have reason to hope would result in the happiest consequences. The country had been under complete control of the Roman Catholics. Roman Catholics didn't want a Bible among their people because they would go away from what they had been taught. Protestantism was not tolerated in the province. The Spanish authorities were on the alert for appearance of heresy in the Louisiana Territory. Baron de Cardonnelet had been succeeded by Governor Don Manuel Galloso Lee or de Lemos, a Brigadier General of the Royal Armies. In the month of January 1799, he issued, among other regulations, the following. Liberty of conscience is not to be extended beyond the first generation. The children of the immigrant must be Catholic. Immigrants not agreeing with this must not be admitted, but removed even when they being, uh, bring property with them. This is to be explained to the settlers who do not profess the Catholic religion. It is expressly recommended to the commandants to watch and that no preacher of any religion but the Catholic comes into this province. These regulations were not new and they did not prevent Baptist preachers from entering the province. They had suffered too long and cruelly to be deterred by such threats as these. No more heroic men ever lived than these early preachers in Louisiana and Mississippi. The first Baptist preacher, indeed, the first Protestant preacher was Bailey E. Cheney. During the persecution, Curtis had remained in concealment. He had removed from, South Carolina, removed from South Carolina about 1790 and settled near Natchez. In 1799, he visited an American settlement near Baton Rouge and preached. He was arrested by the authorities and released upon the promise not to preach anymore. He was not able to organize a church, but he did have the honor of being the first Baptist preacher in Louisiana. The first Baptist church in Louisiana was organized in Washington Parish near Bogue, Chito River and was known as the Half Moon Bluff Church. It was constituted October the 12th, 1812. This church is now extinct. The Calvary Baptist Church in Bayou Chico, St. Landry Parish, was organized November 13, 1812. The centennial of these two churches was observed in 1912 with fitting ceremonies. The following record is made of that noble event. We're talking about real church history now. This is what really happened in those days. We call attention to the centennial year of the history of Louisiana Baptist. In the early years of the 19th century, missionaries from the other states entered this territory. The first Baptist church organized in the state was the Half Moon Bluff Baptist Church in Washington Parish in 1812. By the way, <clears throat> 
that was the War of 1812 too. I'm going to show you something here just while I've got it here. This pistol, according to legend, was used in the American Revolution in the War of 1812. We're talking about something that goes back to that period of time that still works. I'm going to show this to you up here. That's a British pistol. Supposedly, another movie star gave this to Audie Murphy sometime during his career. And it was used in the American Revolution and the War of 1812. It is a flintlock pistol. It still cocks. And there you can see it sparks too. It will shoot if I loaded it. You have to pour powder down there and put a, a wad in there, a piece of cloth, and a, and a bullet on top of it. And you, then you pack it down with this ramrod. That takes a long time to do this, but that's what they were fighting with back then. The Indians were shooting bows and arrows that shot a lot faster. Well, this goes back to 1812. I've left that out there to show it as an illustration different times. The First Baptist Church organized in Theta Half Moon Baptist Church in Washington and Paris in 1812. The church had a brief life and recently the Brethren celebrated its birth over its grave near Franklinton. The first Baptist church organized west of the Mississippi River and the oldest living Baptist church in the state of, is the Calvary Baptist Church at Bayou Chenot, St. Landry Parish. It was organized November 13, 1812 and had a continuous history up to this very good hour it was this church with few others that went out from it to organize Louisiana Association. We gathered in this historic spot and thank God for the preservation of this church and for the pioneer servants of Jesus Christ who laid the foundation of our Baptist cause in Louisiana. The Baptist cause was slow beginning in New Orleans. The first Baptist missionary to the New Orleans was James A. Reynoldson. He was a messenger from the North Carolina uh, to the uh, Triennial Convention in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, May, the May 1814. He came to New Orleans in the winter of 1816 or 17 as a missionary from that body. The Baptist calls passed through many viscositudes in that city. The First Baptist Church there was organized December 28, 1843. Florida was discovered by Ponce de Leon in 1512 on the festival occasion of Pascua de Flores. Hence, uh, it is known as the Land of Flowers. Florida means the Land of Flowers. It was purchased by the United States from Spain in 1819 by a treaty which was formally signed in 1822 constituted into a colony in 1825 and admitted into the Union as a state in 1845. Since the financial was settled by the Spanish, the religion was Roman Catholic. A number of priests accompanied the army of occupation and preached to the Aborigines. They enslaved the Aborigines. It was under the French flag that Protestants were introduced into the Florida by the Huguenots in 1562. Marilyn, that's your family. Yes. That's your, your grandmother, and, and, grandpa, and, and Reed. where was this? And that was in Florida by the Huguenots in 1562. They were the Reformed or Calvinist order. They landed near the mouth of St. John's River, uh, raised the French flag at Fort Caroline, an army of Spaniards came down from Augustine and fell upon the French and massacred the entire colony. These are the Huguenots that left Europe because they had been killed there. They were Baptist. Later the British occupied the country. Baptist work began in that state early in the 19th century. A number of Christian men came into Florida in 1812 as a part of the army to suppress the Indian uprisings. The War Department of Washington records the, the march of General John McIntosh Houston against these offenders in 1812. With this company was Wilson Conner, probably the first Baptist preacher in Florida. General David Blackshears, 
who was sent to aid General McIntosh, says of him, the Reverend Wilson Connor was a man of magnificent stature, fine features and voice, with a commanding personality. While uneducated, he was a man of great vigor, of sympathetic personality, very spiritual, and having a fine delivery. Later, he was followed by other Baptist ministers. Now, what it means they're uneducated, that they weren't educated in the languages. What General George Washington would not write his own speeches because he, he was not fluent in Greek and Latin and even Hebrew. A person was not considered educated at all unless he was educated in Greek and Latin. Greek or Latin. Bethlehem, the first church in Florida, was constituted in an oak grove on the Red Hills west of Florida. Jackson County, March the 12th, 1825, and the record is as follows. Pursuant to the resolution of the Church of Christ in Bethlehem, in said county, conference this day, the better government and union <coughs> of the church for the glory of God we believe to be expedient for us to adopt the Constitution, Covenant, and Decorum. Now some churches, Baptist churches, would do this. Whereas we have reason to believe that God in His goodness has made known the riches of grace to a number of our souls to be formed into a church. We therefore call our beloved brethren Jeremiah Kimbrell, E. H. Calloway, and they have inquired into our faith and manner of life, thought proper to constitute us into a church upon equal footing with other churches of the same faith and order. The article phases were recorded and the church covenant signed. And we have a whole list of people here. The church being constituted in conference appointed brethren James Chasen and, and Clark Jackson, deacons of the church. Brethren Jeremiah Kimbrell and E.H. Calloway were called upon by the church to ordain two deacons, which was done by them. Appointed Brother William Brady and church clerk, whose brother E. B. or E. H. Calloway, pastor of the church, opened the doors of the church and received Brother E. H. Calloway and Sister Elizabeth Calloway by letter. Sister Elizabeth Owens was taken under the watchful care of the church. Conference adjourned. Miller Brady Church Clerk. We got this record. What were the Baptists? What did they believe? They believed your salvation by grace. They believed that there's nothing in, in us that requires God to save us at all. That we're all lost sinners, all gone astray. That baptism is only administered to prospective church members after they have repented and asked God to save their souls and made a public profession of faith. And once they're baptized, they receive the right hand of fellowship in the Baptist church and they're able to vote as democratic body to do whatever they need to do. Receive church members or whatever. That's what a Baptist church is. The second church was constituted in Indian Springs in Leon County in 1828. Other churches were constituted in rapid succession. It is not certain who was the first Baptist preacher, but one of the pioneers was John Young Lindsay, who held services in the northern part of the state before Arkansas Territory was organized. This is the history of America, people. Yeah. His father, Caleb Lindsay, came to Arkansas in 1850 and, and settled in the part of Lawrence County, now Randolph. He was a surveyor and an educated man. One of the earliest schools in the second of the state was taught by Caleb Lindsay in a cave without pay or any thought of pay. He taught church in a cave. He's a preacher. Remember I told you many preachers back then were, were educators. I was told of John Lung Lindsay that he would preach sometimes for two hours and then invite the entire congregation to go over to his house for dinner. Sound like somebody you know, Marilyn? Funny, huh? <laughs> Later, some of the congregation sometimes invited the minister home with them for dinner. I have cooked many, many, many dinners for churches, haven't I? Many, many dinners. A historian says, at what point 
or by what mean the settlements, sentiments of the Baptists were first propagated in Arkansas, I have found it difficult to ascertain. The Reverend David Orr appears to have been the instrument of planting a considerable number of the first church of which I gained any information contemporary with, Doc, with Mr. Orr, or perhaps a short time before him on this ground were Benjamin Clark, Jesse James, and J.P. Edwards. And remember, Jesse James and Frank James, their father was a missionary Baptist missionary. Well, they couldn't catch him. They went from Baptist church to Baptist church after the Civil War. And they were put up by them, and they paid off the farms with their money that they stole from the banks and the trains that robbed the whole neighborhood. And boy, they hated them. J.P. Edwards, the first church of our order in this territory of Arkansas was a Fouché, a Thomas in Lorden County. The first house of worship in Little Rock was built in 1825 by the Baptist. Little Rock, Arkansas today is still where Benjamin Marcus Bogard founded that seminary along with others, J. Lewis Guthrie and uh, M. B. Hubbard, Travis's Hubbard's father. It stood on the south side of 3rd Street between Maine and Scott. Silas Toncray was a pastor from 1824 to 1829. Now we're getting back almost up here to Ben Bogard's time. This church was just disrupted by the followers of Alexander Campbell. These are the Campbellites. These are the Church of Christ. The few that remained faithful afterwards organized the First Baptist Church. Spring River, the old association, soon dissolved and the White River Association was organized in 1840. The next thing we're going to go to is the Great Revival of 1800. The Great Revival of 1800. And in this revival we find heresy. But we find people that were sincerely converted, uh, but without knowledge. They groped for God. There was a lot of emotionalism here. Yeah. And the Baptists just stood back and looked at them and kept on preaching. They made many converts. But this great revival started, this is a period of time we'll get into it. But it is quite outstanding what happened during this period of time. I hope you are enjoying these messages on church history. And the establishment of America. This is American history. It's world history. It's, it's Western civilization all rolled into one even political science, and all reality. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and glory. Please help us remember those people that did so much for your cause here in this country. And always remember our Savior on the cross of Calvary, his death, burial, and resurrection, and his love that he gave to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.